and there we have it. We are ready to roll. Um, I'll give some time for everybody to get in. <clears throat> That's coming in. Crayon time! So chill for a little bit while we're waiting for everybody to get here, and then we will roll. I'm going to check in here. My computer's over here, so if it looks like I'm ignoring you guys, then you'll know, well, yeah, I am kind of ignoring you. But just for a little bit while I check in on people that have questions. Oh, my hair in the back. Zowie. It's a hot mess. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit my computer up here so I don't have to turn around. It's weird. It's so quiet. Like, I, there should be music or something. I need to get some royalty-free music for my live events. Oh, gosh. People, the hair. I don't know if you can see or not, but mm -hmm. I've got the coffee mug earrings on today. Life is golden. All right. So, just to go over, some of the things we're going to need is... Um, paper, copy paper is okay. Even paper that has stuff on one side, we can use the other side for um, some of the practice stuff we're doing. Um, crayons. If you have a Sharpie pen, that would be so cool. If not, hmm. I'm going to be showing some things today that you can do that don't necessarily um, have the have to do with what we're doing today. Just some other mm -hmm. options to do with your crayons. Um, just a minute, got a message. Hmm. Anyway. Somebody sent me a text message about this, but they're not on yet to be able to see. So I can't text them because my phone's up here. Okay. So anyway, back to what I was saying. Paper. Several pages of paper. A Sharpie if you've got it. Crayons. Doesn't matter the condition. We're going to make them look yucky anyway. Um, sandpaper. This is 100 grit. The grit does not matter. We're going to use this to sharpen our crayons. Um, if you're artsy-artsy and have one of these tools, that'll work to sharpen your crayons too. Um, and I think I said leaves or something textury because we're going to do rubbing. I think if you're past first or second grade, you probably have done this. 
and sometimes maybe unintentionally. I have these little coffee cup, I know, shocking, coffee cup paper cutouts. Um, so that's what I'm going to use. And then I also asked everybody to bring coloring book page. And this page is so crazy, I decided to kind of rough in where some of the things were. It's from a stained glass coloring book. So, kind of crazy. I think that's, oh, if, if you have a pencil sharpener that has a little bit larger, that's great. But I'm going to show you how to sharpen your crayons using this because crayons are so soft that the tip goes flat right away. So, hi Jamie Helbig. And by the way, if you hear whining, my geriatric dog is upstairs on her own. There's no one else home. We're not used to this anymore. She's had three weeks of all kinds of people being around. And now she thinks if there's someone around and she's not in the mix of it, that she's being tortured. And she's not. She is the most spoiled, rotten basset hound there ever was. But she hears me talking and she thinks I'm trying to talk to her and she's, yeah. Anyway, craziness, craziness. All right. Oh, my friend Jody's here. Jody, I've missed you so much. I'm glad you're here this morning. Um, all right. So I found in my stash of ancient memories, which, you know, I'm old, so I have ancient memories. I found a coloring book from the 60s. And I know I've got this on forward facing camera and everything's going to be backwards. So sorry about that. But um, my sisters and I, oh, good morning, Chris, you're here. Hi, Chris. Um, anyway, my sisters and I loved to color. And this is one of my older sisters, um, which back in the 60s, it was a good thing to be older. <laughs> anyway, now not so much. Um, did this. I wanted to show you. Let's see. Where did it go? You know, I had this marked with a piece of paper and it has disappeared. Here we go. Jennifer Sue. <laughs> First grade. Age six years old. So, um, let it be known, I wasn't always an artist. Eeks. Um, developmentally, colors do so much for kids. So, this was me in another coloring in the Space Mouse coloring book, which was... A TV show back in the 60s. Space Mouse! I don't remember anything about it other than the pictures that are in here. And this was my sister who's three-ish years older than me. Almost four years older than me. And so the difference developmentally in the skills is pretty amazing. Now, my sister Kay is a fabulous artist in her own right. She doesn't practice it as much, but she is really good. Let me tell you, her singing voice beats mine all over the place. So everybody has their strengths. Anyway, crayons. So there's so many things you can do with crayons. Um, I really wanted to do uh, the melted crayon thing where you put crayon on a canvas 
and then you hit it with a blow dryer. People, it takes about 45 minutes to melt those crayons. We don't have that kind of time. Well, you know, with all the social distancing we do. So if that's something you're interested in doing, send me a message. Maybe I'll do a whole video with just me and a loud blow dryer going to town on a canvas. See, it just, it's, it doesn't work. I'll do a class on it in the art center when we all get back to regular life because it is a lot of fun. So anyway, coloring is a good skill builder for going on into graphite and colored pencils and some of the things you can learn through coloring can be translated into other art forms. All right, well, let's see. I'm gonna wait just a couple more minutes to see um, who else might join in and then we'll get started. So talk amongst yourselves. Okay, but while, while we're waiting, let me just show you. So at the Holly Bazaar, at the Community Arts Center, we have the used purse sale. And um, this little beauty, now it didn't have blue tape on it when it came in. This little beauty came in. It is vintage glorious. And um, when, like, how many times would you like to have a purse that has a hinge on the top that pops it all the way open? Look at that. Now, I'm going to, because um, those of you that know me know I have a love affair with book pages. And for those of you that are totally in love with books, understand, um, oh, I bought this book at last year's used book sale for, I think, 25 cents. The cup, the, the spine was broken. It was falling apart. In fact, as I was reading it, I was just pulling chunks of the book off because it was falling apart anyway. So I'm going to decoupage this with waterproof Mod Podge. Did you know that was a thing? It is a thing. So I'm going to waterproof Mod Podge and I'm going to make this into a planter and put some little, I haven't decided what flowers in here yet. Um, I'll see how long it takes me to kill them because I kill every plant. Um, Jody, I, I, Mamea is still alive. So I, I go into the art center every week or two and give her some more water. My African violet that Jody gave me. Anyway, this is going to be so much fun to do. Um, I'll put a picture of it on the Facebook page at some point. All right. So, oh, just to prove I love things. This is a pencil holder that I made. It's just a tin can. But I used the line drawing from, what book is that? Jack Frost, uh, not Jack Frost. Mm. Call of the Wild. Um, and again, it was a book that was rescued from the landfill. This really isn't about what Jen's been doing um, while teleworking, but check that out. I made a teacup, a bowl, and a little saucer, all out of old book pages. That's what happens when Jen gets bored. All right, so let's go to Crayon World. I'm going to put you down so that you can see what I'm doing down here on my desk instead of checking out my face. All right. This might take just a little I didn't get my stand set up right. All right, are we ready? Okay, so 
I need some paper here. So the first thing I want you to do is wherever your colors are, dump them out. Colors aren't meant to be in a little box. Now, I do have a mega box of crayons. Look at those. Do you know why they're that way? Because I never use these because I feel bad. They're, they're a whole set and they're in a nice box. That's not what crayons are about. Crayons are screaming, use me, use me, use me. So, we're going to talk about a lot of different ways to use these. So, the first thing I want to talk about here is shading. Um, oh, hi, Lily. I'm glad you're here today. Unless that's EJ and then, hi, EJ. Glad you're here today. <laughs> okay, so shading. When you're coloring in your coloring books, things aren't just a flat color. So let's work on, I'm getting a lot of shadows here. We'll bring the light in a little closer. So we're gonna shade. Now, there's several ways to shade. Number one, crayons are wax. They build up a lot of wax pretty quickly, and we're gonna use that to advantage in a little bit, but for right now, if you press harder, it's darker. If you press softer, it's lighter. So, if you can see here, I'm going light and then soft. I'm heavy, and you can also gasp. Use the side of the crayon. If you've got a large area to cover, it only makes sense. And if you're trying to do an area and this part is too big, you know what you can do? You can break that crayon. It's not against the law to break a crayon. It makes it easy. Lot of different ways so press harder to press lighter now if I want to take this into um, another color let's say I want to go into red I would take the red from out here be a little darker and then as I go into the orange get a little lighter now, those of you that have seen some of my color pencil work, technique with color pencil, it just takes a whole lot longer. Um, but it takes a whole lot longer. Here is a little example of colored pencil using the same techniques. Here it's lighter and darker right in there. You can with cheap crayons and cheap crayons parents if you love your kids do not buy rose art crayons they're junk spend the extra dollar 9 or 49 cents or what and get crayola they are the number for a reason. They're good, 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 good for the price. Um, if you want your kids to enjoy artwork, buy decent quality equipment. Um, not going to want, it's frustrating to be doing with sub quality work, whatever, whatever it is you're using. Buy the good stuff anytime can. If you can't buy the best stuff, buy the okay stuff. But when it comes to crayons, let's just forget Rose Art even exists. Um, oh, just a second. I got to sign out of Am I still live, people?
I cannot tell. Will somebody message me if I'm still live? Because my computer has frozen up. Oh, here we go. That's weird. Okay, I promise, if I'm still live, I'll be back with you. that I'm still live. Ah, oh, I love my house. Okay, so Chris Laporta says I'm breaking up sometimes. I'll just keep going um, and hopefully get through this. All right, so shading. Now, if we want to go from a dark color to a really light color. Um, it's the same thing over and over. You can overlap your colors and life is fabulous. All right, so that's shading. Next, I wanna show you blocking. My little coffee cup paper cutouts here. But, um, as you can see here, with the color around the edges, you can use a piece of paper. And blocking just is a way of um, stopping the color where you don't want it to be. So I'm going to take this red crayon and... There you go. Now I've got... instead of and then trying to stay on one side of that or the other. Um, it just gives it a totally different look. So then also use something in a particular shape um, like my coffee cup. Oh, Jen and her coffee. It is a real thing. So I'm doing the same thing so you can see the coffee cup outline and it's a little fatter and a little softer and it's a totally different look and I love it. So that's blocking. Now there's rubbing. So those of you with preschool is a fabulous thing and it's a way to help preschoolers learn their letter shapes so i made a card and i with a marker put the letters on it and then i took my hot glue gun but you could take regular glue and just make lines and then let it dry then you put it under your paper and rub over the top of it and out pops the leaf. now if you got a leaf from outside which because that would have meant putting my shoes on instead of having my slippers on and no i don't have pajama pants on i'm i have jeans on um so the whole thing about teleworking and everybody's in their pajamas from the waist down, I've debunked that today. Yesterday it was true. But. Um, so let's take this same coffee cup and put it under 
the paper. Hmm. I haven't used orange in a while. And and rubbing works side. So I'm just pushing down on it. Those lines turn out. And you can use this for so many things. Um, if you do soft pastel work, like this, this technique is really cool with chalks and chalk pastels. Look how cool that is. That's pretty, pretty fun to do. <gasps> Chrissy's here. Hi, Chrissy. Um, Chris is telling me that you guys are getting broadcast in. Uh, and my computer is trying to think it through. So if I can, do this, I may, um, go off. I would say that I'll just keep going. However, um, anyway, we'll, we'll keep going for now. I'll keep trying to work with it. All right. Now, here's a fun one. Now, I don't think I asked you to get tools to do this one, um, but you can do it with a butter knife. I have my putty knife that is brand new, brand never been used before, sarcasm. So, let's see, let me, let me draw a quick picture. Okay. Oh, this is solar yellow. Not just yellow, solar yellow. So I am laying this crayon on very heavily. Like, I'm really in, I'm trapping this tip. And, okay, I'll keep going in a second. I'm still trying to get back to the Art Center's Facebook page so I can monitor you guys. Really need... Okay, now I have kind of a white people flesh tone here. Oh, that's crap. We're going to make this person, this is one looking person. But I just want to get this on nice. And I'm cross hatching right now, which means going in the direction. And with crayons, whatever color you put on first, that's the color that is getting. Um, all right. Parents watching. This is messy. Put paper down, you know, like tape some newspaper down because you know, flex. It, yeah, it's bad, but we're going to create them. Once you get your color on, now, you're smart enough. To You scrape the wax off and it leaves a light color underneath it that really looks pretty cool. Just from that little tiny drawing, look at all dust. Yuck. So, I'll get that in the trash can.
All right. So then you end up with a much lighter, and it actually is kind of shiny once you've burnished it like that. Burnish is a, a really pressed hard, um, where you're pressing the color into the tooth of the, the um, not fabric. Anyway, into the paper. Yeah. All right. And another one I wanted to show you is etching. You've We've all seen that scratch art where there's color underneath and then black stuff on top and you use a sharp tool, you scratch the black off and the color shines through. So to do this, you um, put some crayon down and then you paint over the top of it with tempera paint or a liquid ink. I've done this with ink because I have ink at home and not tempera paint. Um, I don't think acrylic paint will work, but basically um, the wax doesn't let the, the ink or the tempera paint soak in. Very easy to scratch it off. So I just have my Cricut pick here. You could use a skewer or a toothpick. Skewers are kind of nice because you have the pointy end and the flat end. Um, here's from my um, Nutcracker set. It's just a little nut pick. Um, it works really good because it's shaped more like a pencil. So, I'm just scratching ink, leaving the pretty underneath. So that is etching. All right, I'm going to take my... Now, the next thing I want to talk about is blending. Ooh, this is... Then colored pencils are amazing. Okay, let me clean off my workspace a little bit because I got a little bit of everything going on. We're going to blend with two different mineral spirits. Now, mineral spirits are what I use when I'm doing colored pencil work, um, but... baby oil and mineral spirits have a little bit of that in this container oh I'm going to use my trusty red here and it's going to lay this part way down Here, which one works best? All right, so I've got an earbud, aka just let's see, getting quite a bit on there and then off and then I'm gonna take it rub it. what it's gonna do is dissolve 
so you get a softer look and it takes away the lines be sure on this one that you have paper underneath because that's going to go right onto your table which is not as big a deal with the baby oil as the mineral spirits because mineral spirits are a solvent all right so i'm doing the same thing here with mineral spirits and rubbing and then pull if you don't want to pull it down you can just rub it and rub it it does take a lot of the color off all right so back to these when they dry because it's kind of hard to tell what they look like because they're Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to show you as far as techniques go is This is a cutting board. I don't know if you can tell or not, but I've been using it with my crafting for a long time. And um be gross. So, but Look at all the texture on there. Like, hmm, that's going to be cool. So to get texture, and you can do this anywhere. Like, you could go outside to a tree and take a crayon and a piece of paper and get awesome texture. Um, it's a fast, easy way to do it. So I can... Use the top crayon texture. Again, crayon, turn it sideways. That takes up so much more. What is that? Glue. You can works for me using my exacto blade with this old cutting board. Um, this is a great use um, for cutting boards after they get to the point that you don't feel safe having them um, in your kitchen because of cross contamination and all that. Put it in with your crafting supplies because there's always a time where you need to um, have something to protect your work surface. And a cutting board is great for that. So now I'm going to turn this. I need a little blue. There we go. Broke the blue. Um, so I turned it another direction. And got a completely different pattern. Oh, the other side's not. Uh, some of this sandpaper. Oh, that's what I'll do next. I have to show you how to sharpen your crayons. Um, so look at the different textures. You can see all the cut marks on there. And then look at that look that you can get with um, the sandpaper underneath your paper. Now if you have a heavier paper it's you need to have big um, a heavier paper the sandpaper probably wouldn't show through very well. So Miss Jen, how do I sharpen the tip of my crayons? Well you can use the sharpener at um, this one doesn't work very well. No, not very well at all. Or you can use a pencil sharpener. Now the cool thing, have all these shavings and 
If you didn't know this, you can put those shavings between two pieces of wax paper and with a fairly low iron, iron those shavings in between the two pieces of wax paper and it is gorgeous, fun stuff to do with the kids. All right, so I'm not pushing very hard on this because crayons are soft and they want to break. But, uh, get it back to that very pointy tip that Crayolas have when they come in the box. So, once you get it, to this point, got a flat part on top. Let me get some more of this paper off. By the way, what was your favorite, what is your favorite color in the crayon box? Put that message through. Hi, Mandy Wilson. I'm going to see if I can find mine. Okay. Duh. I love as an adult, I really like indigo blue, rich navy. Love it. and fuchsia. Make me sing. So that's my favorite. All right, back to ADHD people live. Here we go. So, here's how you sharpen your crayon. Get at an angle and you turn it. I don't know if you can tell that I am turning this, but I'm keeping it at the same almost to a nice tip and for those of you that are aspiring artists you can also you, you can do a lot of things this way and if you're looking at this sandpaper and say of Crayola crayons I've got another tip for you but look at that nice point on that crayon now so, um, if you have one of the fabulous things, it's because you can hold it up in your hand and you can kind of do a both. So now we have a nice sharp tip on that crayon that we can make a very fine pointed line for about It's going to be flat again because crayons are really soft. All right, here's a tip for this. Did you know if you take sandpaper and make a design in crayon and a lot of crayon on there, then you can take a t shirt, t shirt or fabric of some kind, onto the sandpaper. And put an iron on the t-shirt so sandpaper t-shirt iron it melt the wax it's a transfer and the design that on the sandpaper get onto the t-shirt is that not an awesome idea so you can sharpen your crayons and be creating a t-shirt all at the same time all right, now, 
I don't, did any of you listen that Miss Ann put? on the Art Center's Facebook page. Um, because if you did, this is sad. Um, it was kind of autobiographical from Tommy DePaula, who is a fabulous children's author and illustrator. And um, Clown of God is one of my favorite books of his. But her, the book she read the art lesson and little Tommy could not wait to go to school so he could have art lessons in school and could have access to cool art supplies was um, I'm sure she was conservative with her supplies um, but she did not allow the kids to the, like you couldn't take the paper off the crayons, you needed to leave. You needed to break the and um, you know, as I'm reading it, I'm thinking of mine. <laughs> and it, it just made me realize that art supplies are meant to be used. When you get art supplies, don't put don't put so many. Let them experience the art, and those at the community art center, um, Laura teaches a lot of classes for us, and this is a wonderful artist, but she kids like number one she loves kids and number two she wants them to explore and experience and create art that is their art not a copy of somebody else's art so she gives the kids a lot of um carte blanche to do whatever they want to do i'm a teacher <laughs> um Kids come out so of art classes with Miss Lara so excited because they've been able to express themselves through their artwork. So if you get a chance when things go back to normal to get your kids into some of the center has, um, especially when we're having camps, Lara's my number one teacher for camps. So. Um, I, you'll love it. They just want the kids to come experience art in a way that they can't at school and have fun. So anyway, back, 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 back to the story. Um, all Tommy wanted to do was do artwork his way. And um, so that's my goal is to help Um, in a coloring book setting, trying to do this, let's see. Hi, everyone. You can't turn your phone while in live. Watch it happen. Okay. There. So this is stained glass, <clears throat> and it's a scene, and I just, uh, just take some time, I ask everybody to do a coloring book, grab a coloring book, um, just color, and if you have any post it, and I'll see see my phone just a little bit my laptop isn't cooperating so we will I'll keep coloring for just a little while and talking because that's what I love to do
color and talk and um, I'll answer any questions that come across and then by in about 10 minutes we will be done I hope everybody is surviving all of our COVID fabulousness. I think the thing that I miss the most are I'm a hugger and so being told I have to keep six feet away from everybody is real and I love smiles and having everybody's smiles hidden by face masks so I am right now doing highlights of my trees Maybe I'll do it this way. That way you guys can see the picture. Like these are tree trees. Rocks. And I'm guessing there's hills that are here and then sky. It's kinda kind of hard to tell what it's supposed to look like. I wonder if in the coloring book. It has pictures of the original stained glass in the back. I'm going to check that. Nope, that would be too helpful. Now, when you're adding extra colors in crayon work, that wax really fast. And once, once it kind of starts balling up, like, I don't know if you can see, there's a little tiny um, wad of wax right there. Once that starts, you're done. Layers of wax on top of it. So I'm pressing a little harder right here at the end a little bit so that I can blend because um, like I said earlier, once that wax buildup is there, you can kind of see through the different layers. darker here because these leaves, this clump of leaves, leave a shadow. So if I make what is behind it or under it a little darker, it, make it, it makes it look like it's behind. Okay, I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Much patience for coloring. I mean, when I'm work and I I can spend hours on 
something this size but really i'm i'm a little too impatient maybe that's why i like to break my crayons and use the sides because i can get a lot more done in less time let's go 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 now if you want to have lines circles that's helpful too Well, I hope everybody had a fabulous Easter. I don't know about you, but I'm really struggling with this whole, oh my gosh, it's April already. Um, our last snow, hopefully. Although when I lived in Nebraska, this is crazy. We had snow in Nebraska on the last day of school. The last day, so it was May 20, maybe May 20th. And we got like four inches of snow. Now the next day it was like 75. Snow, the end of, that was craziness. All right. Well, there you have it. I've shared with you a lot of stuff that you can do with crayons. Um, I've shared, I've not shared some cool things that you can do with crayons. Um, this isn't hot, but Oh, it's stuck in there. Crayons are the same. Sticks. Now, you won't want to use it in a glue gun that you're going to use for glue because then you'll end up with multicolored glue and that won't be too cool. You can jam a crayon into your glue gun. Just saying. If you have a heat gun, or a blow dryer. The blow dryer will need to be on the highest heat setting and the lowest fan setting. And it takes to get them to the melty stage. But you can blow the crayon on, on a canvas or on a piece of poster board to create some really cool art that way. Um, you can take a grater and grate your crayons or... Use a pencil sharpener and you can melt these in any number of ways. Paper and then put fabric on top of it. Iron that or between two sheets of um, paper like I said earlier. Um, you can put chunks of into muffin tins and melt them into one to take outside and uh, goof off on the sidewalk with the crayons. It'll eventually come off, parents. Don't worry. Um, I did a video on in the oven to about 350 degrees for about and then onto those hot rocks. So cool. All right. So many things to do with crayons. Um, use the crayons. That's what I've got for you. Have a great day at the Community Arts Center. Stay in, stay well. God bless.